Hello, I'm Professor Dana Redford, and I'm president of the Platform for Entrepreneurship Education in Portugal. I do research on entrepreneurship and public policy, and I work with the European Commission, with various national governments, uh, including the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, growth entrepreneurs, and we're going to talk about impact entrepreneurs. And as you can see from the slide, uh, here is an enormous wave uh, in um, Nazaré, Portugal, which is being surfed by Garth McNamara, an American surfer who caught a 24-meter wave. And um, I, I put this in because it's symbolic of what an impact uh, entrepreneur uh, might do. Uh, doing something that is just uh, massive and um, very difficult and uh, going and riding the wave. If we talk about uh, this also, uh, Garth McNamara had a very big impact on the local community in Nazaré, Portugal, and uh, created many jobs and a lot of interest in the surf community uh, there and um, has had an impact, if we will, beyond just the surf world. If we talk about characteristics of entrepreneurs, well, they start their companies normally between the ages of 26 and 45. Uh, they have a, uh, a high degree of education. They normally uh, partner, and we're gonna go into this a little bit uh, deeper in this uh, presentation, uh, and they look at a global focus on their, their work. Um, they're likely to start businesses um, beyond the opportunities that are currently exploited, and um, they, they also are likely to be successful in being able to find venture funding. Not all, all entrepreneurs will use uh, venture capital uh, or risk capital or angel investors, but high impact entrepreneurs usually do. If we look at some of the characteristics, we can also say that they have previous experience. Uh, they have previous experience many times in high growth uh, companies. So we can see companies like PayPal, uh, that have uh, uh, entrepreneurs that started uh, other uh, companies like LinkedIn uh, and had that experience uh, at the high growth uh, uh, PayPal first. Uh, if we look at um, uh, also the, the gender, many times uh, they're male, but there are many female high impact entrepreneurs. And um, they also are uh, very much uh, interested in the, the initial conditions of what, where they would start their business. So that uh, would we'll talk a little bit about the size of the market. Uh, now that can be uh, geographic size, uh, population size, uh, but it can also be the size of a very specific and niche market. Um, if you talk about the, the industry experience of these founders, many times it's in the same industry, but it could be in different industries. Uh, they have those management skills that they've learned uh, in their past. Uh, and they also talk a lot about social capital. Uh, they also, uh, other aspects are uh, a productive uh, a production awareness uh, of their target market, uh, an ownership structure, and, uh, and they understand the governance model. Um, but uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the different types of capital that uh, growth entrepreneurs use. So most of us understand economic capital, that is uh, the money to be able to, to get started, and that being an important resource. We can also talk about human capital human capital being the uh, human factor, uh, the different types of people that you need to run a, an organization. Um, there's uh, also a concept of political capital. That means that politicians might spend their political capital when they have an important bill to move forward. Uh, and um, we can talk about uh, uh, different uh, scenarios where people spend their uh, political capital and are unable to uh, maybe continue their mandate or what have you. Um, there's also a more recent uh, article that has been written about uh, erotic capital. Uh, it is said that fem females have more erotic capital uh, than men. Um, but uh, this, uh, this concept is uh, a quite interesting one. Um, but uh, not going to be the one we're going to talk about today. What we are going to talk about is we're going to talk about social capital. And uh, we have to talk about social capital in the context of how we define entrepreneurship. And using the Harvard Business School definition, uh, the working definition, and that is the pursuit of opportunity beyond the resources you currently control. Entrepreneurs are very good at finding opportunity. The idea of pursuit is it's, that it's constant. 
And the idea also that you have resources that are not currently in your control means that your vision is beyond what you currently uh, have uh, in terms of uh, money or uh, human capital. Um, in talking about uh, defining what is social capital, uh, social capital is uh, really an aspect of networks. It's your own personal networks, and high growth entrepreneurs are experts at being able to leverage their personal networks. This is uh, based on trust and cooperation and uh, a collective action, uh, and the idea of being able to mobilize a network uh, to be able to do this. So why is social capital one of these important issues for growth entrepreneurs? Well, that's because resources usually are embedded in networks. Now that can be clients, but it can also be partners, it can be suppliers, uh, it can be finding that human capital, but the idea is that it is embedded uh, in a, a network. If we talk about uh, what are the norms of your network, well, that's uh, talking about uh, trust and we're talking about support and the idea of creating a sense of community. In analyzing social capital, and we can do this for our own networks, we talk about the structure and the function of those networks um, and how networks are, are really vital to uh, this concept of social capital. If we talk about your network, Let's just take a moment here and think about what are the people who are in your network? Are they your same age? Do they have the same uh, educational level? Are they of the same economic level? Uh, what about uh, their internet usage? <clears throat> what about uh, their usage of and purpose of using the internet? Uh, we could also define and, and, and look at your network by the diversity. How many different types of people are in your network? What sort of entertainment uh, do they use social media? Uh, are you, uh, you could also talk about the closeness that you uh, are with, with those friends and how they interact with peers uh, and perhaps use social media. But again, we go back to this idea of trust and uh, community and looking to help. If we talk about uh, the functional aspects of the network, we talk about bridging and bonding. Uh, and the concepts of, of a bridge is how much do you reach across other groups and to, uh, to these frontiers of, of, of collection of collective action. And if we look at bonding, that means uh, what are the, the strengths of these bonds and the common interests uh, that you have uh, and the cohesiveness of these bonds. If we talk about uh, uh, bridging, we would talk about the connection uh, with a broad range of people, the linkages with uh, external sources of information, and also looking outward uh, as far as an attitude, a general attitude. Uh, viewing oneself as part of a larger group and this question of community again. If we talk about the bonds, the bonds are social and uh, emotional connections. The, the access perhaps to scarce resources, uh, the homogeneity, that means the sameness of, of your group, uh, and the ability to mobilize that in solidarity for some sort of action. And maybe there's also some sort of antagonism with other groups. Um, in sum, if we talk about social capital, we talk about how resources are embedded in networks and how there are some differences in the structure and the function of these connections. Uh, you might want to think about how you can bridge and link to different groups, how you can bond uh, and create that emotional connection. And building social capital is something that you can do now. It's not a question of waiting until you're a high impact entrepreneur. Many times with my students, I suggest that they go out and interview different people that they would be able to mentor uh, with them and, and someone who would be able to be a role model. And these sorts of role models are important when we're talking about uh, growth entrepreneurs. If we look at growth entrepreneurs, many times they have important mentors who have given them support in the past and they found that within networks. So if we look again at uh, some of the aspects of growth entrepreneurs, they tend to be young, they tend to be uh, of high levels of education, uh, they look to partner, they work globally, 
and they also are looking to exploit opportunities. So remember, in looking at growth entrepreneurship, you're looking at opportunity recognition and finding where those uh, resources are, and many times they're in social capital. So in being an expert entrepreneur or in developing yourself as a growth and impact entrepreneur, you are probably going to want to look at how you can leverage your network and develop your social capital. Thank you for listening and good luck on being a growth and impact entrepreneur.